How many are ready for the word of God tonight? How many are ready for the word of God tonight? I've been chomping at the bit to preach this, what I'm going to share tonight. I need to kind of start off by sharing a scripture that I woke up this morning and then moving right into that. So if you brought your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn, if you would, please, to the, the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 10. And let me just say this. Sometimes, because of our current, the current atmosphere in our culture, it can sometimes seem that the church is actually powerless and defeated. And sometimes it looks like we're not gaining any ground. And it even feels like sometimes that we're losing ground, that we're not really winning the battle. Come on. Sometimes it feels that we're wondering, are we really making an impact in our cities? Are we really making an impact for people's lives? Are we, are we really making the impact in, in, in the community? Are we really doing anything? Come on. And sometimes there's a tendency, well, we'll just hang it up and not move any forward. We're really not touching. We'll just stay within the four walls. And we're wondering if even God's with us or around this. Can I tell you something? The Lord spoke to me. You know what he wants to do in this house? He wants to make this house a place where dreams come true. The church needs to be a place where dreams come true. Because I want to say something to you. D despite what the church in America may look like, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not looking at what it looks like. I'm looking at what God says in the Word. Come on, church, because it looked like Jesus was defeated. It looked like nothing was going to happen. Now, I have to read this before I get in trouble. Are you there in Ephesians 3.10? It says, to the intent, Paul writes, to the intent now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. So in other words, here's what he's saying. He's basically saying there's going to be a message to the angels and the demons. There's going to be a message. What that message is going to say is this. He then goes on to say it. He says, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church. Everybody say the church. Everybody say the church. Not, not the government. The church. The church. Are we the church tonight? Are we the church tonight? Are we the church tonight? It says the manifold wisdom of God. In other words, church, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what may, people may think, but God is going to display his wisdom through the church. It's through the church his power is going to be demonstrated. It's through the church that mankind gets restored. It's through the church. Now, now church, I, I looked up this word manifold, I, 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 I began to sit there and I just began to be amazed at what it meant. But what it meant was it meant many colored. Everybody say many colored. It means multidimensional. How many know that even here tonight we have many colors? Oh, oh church, I, uh, we've got many colors here. We've got Kenyan, we've got Tongan, we've got Polynesian, we, we've got many colors, we've got Hispanic, we have, we have Filipino, we have all kinds of many facets of colors in this room tonight. Church, you know what that is? That's not supposed to happen. Come on, church. Because of our cultural differences, because of our language, because of where we are. But what is he saying? The manifold. In other words, the many colored. 
Now, church, when I, when I saw that word, what it meant, many colored, all of a sudden, something began to stir in my spirit. And as I said earlier, God wants to make this church a place where dreams come true. But who wore a coat of many colors? Oh, come on, church. Who, wrote, who, who wore the coat of many colors? Joseph, right? What was Joseph's mission? Joseph's mission was not only to rescue Israel. Joseph's mission was not only to rescue Egypt, but Joseph's mission was to rescue the entire world. Come on, church. Oh, 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 or hear, hear what I'm saying. It's through the many faceted, many colored, uh, the manifold wisdom of God that through the church that the world is rescued. Come on, church. Now, I'm not a universalist. That's not right doctrine. Not everybody gets rescued. Come on, church. Now, think about this. The brothers, what did the brothers do? The brothers didn't like his dream, right? So people that don't have vision always attack people who do, <laughs> right? People that aren't dreaming attack people who are dreaming. See, that's why I love hanging out with Pastor Ron because he's always talking about his dream. You know what I'm saying? It, it stir, he's not saying anything negative. He's not telling this problem and that problem. He's talking about his dreams. Because if you're not talking about your dreams, you're not dreaming enough. Right? Because we all know the famous scripture in Proverbs 29, 18 that says, Without a vision, my people, what? Now, what does that mean? That means without a dream, a God dream. Come on. Without a prophecy, without something redemptive, without revelation. That's what it means. We got to give a revelation of God's heart. We got to get a revelation of God's wisdom. We've got to get a revelation of God's will. Come on. Now, 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 here it is. What did the brothers do? The brother. Now, the brother said, well, here's this man who, who is wearing the coat of many colors. Church, who gave it to him? His father gave it to him. Come on, church. What, 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 did, what did our Lord, what did, what did our father give Jesus? He gave him a coat of many colors because he wasn't just assigned to the Jews. He was assigned to all the nations to redeem the nations. Come on. Now, what did the brothers do? The brothers, the Bible says, stripped him of his coat. So, once we strip you, what's going to happen now to your dreams? Once we strip you, once we, once we crucify you, once we put you on the cross, but church, sure, hear me, you can take my coat, but you can't take my dream. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can, you can strip me economically, but you can't strip my hope. Uh, you, 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 can, you, can, you can take all you want, but you're not going to strip the word that God put on the inside of me tonight. Come on, church. Because if I have a vision from God, it doesn't matter what gets taken away. Come on. Because honestly, when Joseph got his coat stripped, it actually looked like his dream was not going to come to pass. And, and, and think about this. Joseph is a type of Christ. It looked like, it looked like when they took the garment of our Lord and ripped it in half. Come on, church. Are you hearing me? And strip Jesus. He, we're done with Jesus. But the manifold wisdom of God had another plan. Oh, come on, church. 
I have a dream for my son. I have a dream for my son. And despite what the enemy has done, because I could imagine the devil saying, oh, now I got you, Jesus. Now I got you. What's going to become of your dream to see mankind come to the knowledge of you? What's going to happen now? You're on the cross. You're nothing. God says, oh, no, no, no. I have another plan. And I'm going to let every principality and power in heaven, I've got another plan. There's another plan. It's called a resurrection, church. Because, church, if you don't have a dream, you can never have a resurrection. I said all that to tell you that I think that tonight I am, I am speaking, I am prophesying to dreamers. I'm prophesying to dreamers. And what I want to do is I want to spend the next few moments now in the book of Acts. And I want you to turn to Acts chapter 3. Now, church, here's what I want to tell you. I'm so glad you're Pentecostal, and if you're not, you're going to become one tonight. Come on. Because let me just say this. The further away we get from the book of Acts, the more unlike the church we become. I'm going to say this again. The further we get away from the book of Acts, the more unlike the church we become. Because the church was not birthed by a denomination. It was birthed by Pentecost. Come on, church. In the book of Acts. That's why you need to read the book of Acts. You need to study the book of Acts. It's not just the Acts of the Apostles. It's not just the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's the Acts of the resurrected Lord. Come on, church. It's his power unleashed on the earth. Now, church, I don't know about you, but I want the supernatural power that the apostles had. Come on, church. The church is not birthed just because someone gets a good idea. The church was birthed in power. And a church that's not birthed in power is not a church. Now, listen. It may, have a, it may have a congregation full of people, but it's just a gathering. Now hear me. What's happening in Acts 3? What's actually taking place? Now we all know this, that what is actually happening is we know it as the miracle of the lame man at Gate Beautiful. It was actually... God breaking in in the church. Are you hearing me? It's a, it was a historical event that took place that was recorded in Scripture. And church, I'm going to tell you, when I, when I went to school, they didn't teach me about God's history. Right? They taught me about wars. They taught me about kings and queens. They, they taught me about governments. They taught me about peace treaties. They taught me about science. They taught me about human history. But there is somebody, come on, there is somebody ruling all history. It's called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's his story, right? It's his story. Ultimately, the manifold wisdom of God will be displayed through the church. Now, what's happening? What's happening, it's not just a demonstration of power, and it's not just a historical event that took place, even though those are true. What I'm going to preach it tonight is much differently than you've heard it. I'm not going to talk to you about just a demonstration of power. You already know that. I'm not going to just talk to you about a historical event that took place. And we need to study it that way. We need to. But I'm going to talk to you about in what it means as a parable. Everybody say a parable. Because I want you to look at the condition of what's taking place. What is taking place in Acts 3 is the same thing that is taking place in churches in America right now. There's an absence. Everybody say absence. Of presence and power. And when there's an absence of presence and power, you have people in a church that are without dreams, without hope, because what is happening now is the Bible, are you there? Are you there at Acts 3? 
I want you to see this. I love this. It says, and now, verse 1, and now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, prayer, the ninth hour. Everybody say, went to the temple. Now, let me just tell you something. Peter and John are Jews. They went to the temple to pray. That, that Pentecost has been poured out. The, the, the church has grown. But that's where they go and worship. And that's where they go and pray. But you have to understand also what they were doing is they were not just going up to the temple to pray. They were also going up to the temple to give their offering. Come on, church. Because every single Jew, they, they, they would never go to the temple without putting something in the temple treasury, which meant two things. They were not only coming to pray and worship, but they were coming to give. Come on, church. Are you hearing me? You see what I'm saying? You see, see, th th this is what we have to understand, what the church is, needs to be. It's not just a place where give me, give me, give me. It's not just a place where serve me, serve me, serve me. Yeah, we've got to graduate. Come on, church. And I, I understand we, we, we want to feed the poor. We want to we wanna reach out to the community. But I'm speaking to believers right now here. I'm speaking to the majority, 90% of the people sitting in this room tonight are already born again. You, But they're... We should not be coming to the house just to get. Because if we come to just to get, then we're probably not going to experience the fullness that God has for us. Come on, church. I want to come to the house of the Lord to give. Different concept. Because, see, when you're dreaming, you don't just dream to get. You dream to give. I'm going to show my, I'm going to show my service. I'm, gonna, I'm going to show my time. I'm, gonna, I'm going to show my energy. I'm going to show my resources. I'm, I'm going to show my finances. I'm going to show everything in my life. I'm going to give everything my life. It's worth it, and I'm giving it to God. Come on. But now notice this. Here's the conditions. We find the condition of the church, right here in the church in Acts three. It's, it's a prophetic parable of the conditions. Now notice this. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Everybody say carried. Now wait a minute. I believe in caring people, helping people, but I don't believe in carrying them all their life. Church, one-third of Americans are on welfare. And I think welfare has its place in helping those that are hurting economically and, and, and have the basic necessities of food and clothing. I, I, I think there is a certain responsibility that every one of us have to help provide for those that are in need. I believe that. The, but the problem is, the, the tragedy with wel welfare is that, that people that stay on welfare never learn how to dream. Come on. Because welfare, the welfare mentality keeps me from dreaming that my somehow my life is going to get better. That, that sometimes I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to get healed. I'm going to get rescued. I, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to be somebody. I, I'm going to go to education. I, I'm going to contribute to society. I'm going to contribute to the church. Church, if you're carried, you can't contribute. So this man was lame from birth, carried. Now, notice this. It says, whom laid daily. Everybody say daily. Wait a minute. That means that it had become a habit. Laid daily at the gate because, listen, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask for alms from those who entered the temple. Now you have to see this. The people that carried him were just as much responsible 
for his be, him being paralyzed as he was. They are paralyzed too. Because they are not dreaming for this man to get better. Oh, come on, church. I have a dream for the church. I have a dream for the people to get better, not to get worse, not to stay in the same place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I have a vision to get people better. That's why I'm in ministry. I have a vision for people to get whole, to be healed, to be saved, to be delivered. Come on, church. And I don't mind giving people a ride and helping people, but I'm not going to do it every single day or for the rest of your life because then I'm enabling you. You see what I'm saying? You see where the, ch the church is becoming. It's becoming more of a social club than a place where God's presence and God's power is. Come on, church. It's becoming a place where we just carry you in. We bust you in. We, we, we give you this and we give you that. And then, we, and then you go and we do your thing. You do your program. And then you leave crippled. Come on, church. I can't live like that anymore. I'm sure that Many times people have come up to ask Pastor Ron and Delonda for alms. And there's nothing wrong with giving alms, church. I want to make this clear. But if alms keep me crippled, if, if money keeps me crippled. Because, listen, for him to be carried daily, I notice he's not carried to Macy's. Are you hearing me? He's carried to the front of the church. Because why? Because the people that are carrying him, as well as he knows, is that people have come up to the temple not just to pray, but to give God. So they, that means that they have a pocket full of silver and gold. Oh, come on, church. Are, come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? That means that they're carrying money in their pocket. Uh, and I know they, that, 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 that what will happen is they'll see his condition. They'll see his hurt. They'll see his pain. They'll, they'll see what he's going through. They'll, they'll see who his mama was and who his daddy was and all the stuff that he went through. And what they'll do is they'll come and they'll feel sorry for him. So we'll carry them, which means they were actually making money off of him. In other words, and guess what? The church is helping him. Helping him remain paralyzed. Because the church did not have a dream that he could walk, that he could be healed, that he could be somebody, that he could leap, that he could dance, that he could shout, that he could be in the presence of God, that he could be on the worship team, that he, he could be a preacher, that he could be somebody. Come on, church. So what we'll do is we'll just, just give you more silver and gold, church. Because if silver and gold was the answer to this nation's problem, then we wouldn't have any. Because that's a question of money. It's a question of dreaming. But notice this here. It says, verse 3, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms. So he noticed these, these two men. He thinking they're just like everybody else. I'll, I see them. I'll, I'll do the same thing that I've been doing every single day. I'll ask these two men for, for some more money. So obviously, because he was brought there daily, his can was being filled. Somehow, his needs were being met. So notice this. And fixing his eyes on him, verse 4, with John and and fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, look at us. Everybody say, look at us. But the next verse is amazing because here's what it says. So he gave them his attention. Now, now, now these lines, I'm reading from the New King James, is amazing to me. Expecting to receive something from them. Everybody say, expecting to receive something from them. 
Church, I hope you came tonight not expecting to receive something from me. Because most people are expecting to receive their dream from another person. Therefore, they're, they're expecting to receive their, another, uh, their dream from more money. Come on, church. I hope you did not come to church expecting to receive something just from Pastor Ron and Delonda. The problem is, be a church, I have nothing to give you. I have absolutely nothing to give you. I'm just a person. I'm just a human being like you. Come on, sir. And that's the problem. People that don't dream expect to be, receive something from someone else. Church, I came to here. I came tonight not expecting to receive something from me or you. I expected to come and receive something from God. Because if I come to church expecting to receive from people, I will be majorly disappointed. Come on, church. If I expect to come receive something from them, my affirmation, my help, my, my, my pick to pick me up, they can't pick me up. Come on, church. You can't pick me up like Jesus can. Come on. Expecting. So it tells me the condition that, that this church was not only expecting to receive something from each other. Can I tell you this? 30 years of marriage. I can't expect Meliana to give me what I need. That's not her job. That's God's job. Because if I expect my wife to do this and this and this, I will be disappointed. Come on, church. Because she can't do it all the time. And some husbands sitting here, we expect our wives to do this and this. The problem is you're expecting your wife to do something that only God can do. Same with wives. You're expecting for, from your husband what only God can give you. Now notice this. The famous line, what I'm going to tell you. Hear me what I'm going to tell you right now. I understand. There's a reason why we took an offering. I understand it takes money to do to proclaim the gospel. I'm not against silver and gold. We need the silver and gold to turn these lights on. Come on, sir. To keep the fans running, to keep the ministry going. I am, I am, we need silver and gold. We need to be people obedient to their tithe and offering for that to continue. I understand that. But see, here's the thing. There's a very reason why this man is still crippled, church. Because I want to say this to you. I'm going to be quite frank. I'm going to be very, very candid about what I'm going to tell you. I'm not here to offend you, nor am I worried about whether I'm going to be liked or not. That's not why I'm in ministry. Because if you get in ministry to be liked, I'm telling you, you're in for a rude awakening. Come on. Because people sometimes, I had a, people, a lady the other night come into my face. I didn't like what you said. Now, I just got to smile and say, ma'am, I'm so thankful you came. You know what? Now, I, if that, can, if that st sends me on a tailspin, then I'm probably not called. Come on, church. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to preach to be liked. Uh, I didn't come here to be liked. I came here to tell you the truth. It isn't being liked that's going to set you free. It's the truth that sets you free. Now, now, church, I, I'm going to say this with, and with, with all sincerity because I, this happened to me. I, I'm going to use two examples. You know, um, Pastor Morocco, I was, I, was, I was preaching at the prophetic conference. And at the conference, there are 2,000 people at the conference. And so it was my turn to speak. And he told me in the green room before we walked into the sanctuary, he said, John, I want you to take an offering for the conference. And I, I said, I would, I, after you preach, I want you to take an offering so we can help meet the needs of the conference. And I said, I'd be honored to, Pastor Morocco. And so I took the offering. And 
$75,000 came in that night. Or that day, excuse me. That's a lot of money. The conference cost $180,000 to put on for four days. So that was just a portion of it. Now, can I say something to you? The church in America has silver and gold. Because we can call a minister's meeting and raise money for a building. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We can gather enough people under the roof of the church and raise money for a cause. We can do that. Come on. We can do that. We can, we can put the cause up on the screen. We can advertise. We can fill the house. And we can raise money for something. But here's the problem, church. But well, you know what? Because here's what, when, what Peter said. Peter says, he looked at him, the man. He looked at him. And, and he said, silver and gold have I none. Everybody say, silver and gold have I none. Now, church, we've already established he's had silver and gold. But you got to understand, his silver and gold was not designated to somebody who didn't have a dream. Oh, come on, church, right? You've got, you've got to see this. You've got to see this because this is where people make a mistake. The Bible says that I'm to give my tithe and my offering into the storehouse. Everybody say storehouse. Everybody say storehouse. That word storehouse means place of abundance. So that means that my money is supposed to go into a place of abundance. There's a reason why Peter said, silver and gold have I none. I'm not about to sow God's money into something that is hopeless. Are you hearing me? Somebody that doesn't have a vision, doesn't, doesn't have a dream, I'm not going to do that because then I'm not going to get blessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? See, there's a reason. He has silver and gold. But he had designated the silver and gold for the temple, church, not for something that doesn't have a dream. Are you hearing me? So, you, so you've, got to, you've got to ask yourself, if you're not being financially blessed, what are you putting your seed into? Really, it's, it's a principle. It's the storehouse. In other words, I'm not going to sow into anything that has no vision. That's not moving. That doesn't have a dream. Because otherwise, I'm not going to sit. All I am doing is I'm fueling that person being crippled. Oh, come on, church. And paralyzed. Now, church. Because what is he going to do with it? He's going to take it. He's going to hand it to the people that carried him. You're going to go back and come back the next day and be in the same place. I'm not doing that anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, church, getting back to what I said earlier, the American church right now could walk up to somebody who's crippled and say, I got silver and gold. But we can't say, such as I have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Church, something is wrong with that picture. That tells me I, I, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm part of the problem. But I don't want to live that way, Sister Cindy. Because church, I, I'll just say this. You see this man, he's in a wheelchair. You see this, in, he's in a wheelchair right now. Right? And you know the other night, I, I had a service and I got a $10,000 offering for one service. That's a lot of money for one service. But church, who cares about the $10,000 offering if I can't get him up out of his chair? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who really cares about that? Come on, church. I appreciate it for my ministry. I appreciate how it helps me. I'm not saying that I didn't need it. But the bottom line is there's something burning in my spirit. God did not put Acts 3 in there for it just to be a historical event, a demonstration of God's power. God wants to make this church a demonstration of his power in these last days in Corona, California. 
Church, I'm burning with this. I have to contend for this. You know why it's not happened? Not because there's not a Holy Spirit. Not because God said we couldn't have it. It's we're not contending for it. Because it's easier to, to give you some silver and gold. That's very easy. Here, pay your rent. Pay your light bill. Here, do this. But no, I have a dream. Peter, then Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have. I can't imagine the, eye, the man's eyes is fixed on Peter and Peter's eyes. And you're telling me, you're the first person. You're the first person that ever said that. Oh, come on, church. Which means you're the first person that really loved me. You're the first person that really cared about me. Because let me tell you, deep down in my spirit, I'm, I'm tired of being carried. Deep down in the depth of my heart, I wish I wasn't born there. Because you know what? I'm going to tell you something, church. When you were crippled, when you were paralyzed, you had no access into the house of the Lord. You had no access. That means he's outside the presence of God. People that aren't dreaming are outside the presence of God. Come on, church. Now, I'm not saying that they're not sitting in the sanctuary. But they're outside the presence. They don't feel God. They don't sense God. They don't know God. They wish, oh, please, God. But, they, but there's nobody there to tell them. I don't have silver and gold for you. Now. Feel the anointing. He says, silver gold I do not have. But what do I have? But what I have, I give you. I don't got it. I don't got what you think you need. Because you think you need silver and gold. But such as I have. Everybody say, such as I have. If you don't got anything, you can't give everything. And church, I am going to go to my grave. I don't want more silver and gold. I want what Peter and John had. Because as Peter and John, what they had picked up a generation. Because my, 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 I see the generation of men and women in my nation falling into trap of drugs, alcohol, sexual promiscuity, uh, violence, uh, all kinds of, that the kids sit there uh, fixed on a video by Microsoft to, to, to watch some game that they become desensitized to murder and they think it's okay and they spend hours and hours, they're not dreaming about their life. Come on, church. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? They have no dream. I, I, I know of a guy who's called of God, but he sits in front of his, his video screen hour after hour after hour feeding his, his lost, his dream. Church, I'm telling you, we think it's okay, but it's not. They're not dreaming. And God wants to use you. To give somebody their dream back. Somebody their dream back. Silver and gold. I do not have my silver and gold. It's for God. But what I do have. Come on church. In other words, I've got something that you really need. It's something. It's fire shut in my bones. It's the Holy Ghost welling up inside of me. It is a, it is a hope that you never thought you could have. It is an ability that I want to put inside of you that Jesus gave me. I feel like preaching right now. I'm telling you, church, guess what? See, Corona is, uh, is crippled. Come on, church. Really crippled. It's a crippled community. But God had put this church because the enemy tried to cripple this church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The enemy has tried to cripple this church and make us powerless. But church, there's somebody that came here tonight and says, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. Now, 
now, church. But what I do have, I give to you. What does he say? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. A few years ago, Pastor Renee, who's sitting in the back of the church, she was there that night. A lady by the name of Rosie in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair. Put that mic up, John. A lady in a wheelchair. I had been to the church probably seven, eight years. She'd been in the wheel. She has a little, little scooter that she would drive up and she'd sing on the worship team. She's in a wheelchair. It was one of the nights and all of a sudden the power of God touched her. I was, I was thinking, uh, this just went through my mind. I'm tired of seeing Rosie in the wheelchair, God. And that night, Renee and I prayed for Rosie. And Rosie got out of that chair and walked home that night. And that, how many years ago was that, Pastor Renee? Three or, three or four years ago? Three years ago, do you know that Rosie is still walking? She never went back to that chair. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. See, the, the, her, 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 her silver and gold bought her the chair. Come on, church. But, but Jesus, come on, but Jesus. But Jesus got her out of the chair. And the next night she testified that my chair's for sale. No joke, come on. I don't need it anymore. Come on, church. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus. Now, church, he didn't stop at prophesying because that was a prophetic word. He's speaking. Sometimes you can't speak it. You've got to act on what you've been speaking. Because the key, because some people stop at that verse and say that's when the miracle happened. But you got to read the next verse because the next verse is the key. He says, then I took him by the right hand. In other words, you know what he did, Pastor Ron? He, he touched him. People need to be touched. They need to be touched. And you know what he did? He took him by the right hand. And the Bible says he lifted him. He lifted him while he was still crippled. Church, that's why God said to Ezekiel, when God sent him to a valley of dry bones, come on, that were extremely dry, and asked him the question, can these bones live? Oh, come on, church. Can people come out? Come on, can, can the power of God be demonstrated in our generation like Acts 3? Come on, church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We got to stop talking about it and start demonstrating it. Because if all we do is talk about it, we never touch anybody. Come on. Because, because here's what we do. We talk it. Our leaders talk it. But there's no demonstration. Come on, church. And that ought to be legal. The religious spirit says, oh, we need the Holy Ghost. And they have the right rhetoric. But they're not going up and actually contending. In other words, I'm going to grab a hold of you and pick you up. Because people that have a dream understand that my primary goal is to pick up the body of Christ, to pick up the church. Church, because here's here because when I was prophesying over Pastor Ron, all of a sudden they're gonna go to paralyzed places. And the wine of the spirit is gonna be released to pick people up. If I love you, I'll pick you up. If I love the church, I'll grab a hold of you, I'll touch you, and I'll pick you up. Now, the outcome is not into my hands anymore. 
It's in his hands. I prophesied it. I grabbed a hold of you. I started to pick you up. See, that's why God said, ask Ezekiel this question. Can these bones live? Now, the prophet's not going to say, I don't think so. I understand they're real dry and understand the church is, you know, kind of dead and uh, understand that they don't have any dream or vision and they're perishing, but I'm not going to say, well, God, you can't do it because the conditions are really bad. If he says, no, God, I don't think you uh, th think you can do it, I think God would have sent another prophet to the valley. Hear me, hear me what I'm going to tell you right now. If we don't believe God will do it, if we don't believe God can do this, then God, what God will do is God will raise up somebody who believes it can happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am totally serious. Are you hearing me? He put us in this valley. Come on, church. He put this in this valley, right? Why? So that, you, know what, you know what Ezekiel did? Before, before God told him to prophesy, he let him look around the valley and inspect how dry it was. Come on, church. How, how, how there was an absence of power and presence so that he could get a revelation of how the conditions were. Because if you don't have a revelation of the conditions of your country, come on, church. I'm sorry. You, you, you don't have a dream for your country. Church, I, I wish I would have say, said this, but how many ever heard of Paul Harvey? He was arguably the most famous radio commentary in our nation. He passed away some years ago. But in 1965, and I encourage you to go home and, and type this on YouTube. And the title of it is, If I Were the Devil. Have you seen it, Pastor Ron? And what he did is the last few moments, few minutes, only about three, three and a half minutes, he basically did a commentary to say, if I were the devil, this is what I would do. And church, it is so scary prophetic. Everything, now Paul Harvey was a Christian man, a godly man, and had a voice. And he warned our nation. In 1965. And church, when you read it, they've got it written out. When you see it on YouTube, you can, it's, what is happening in our country is happening just as he said. Now church, when I read that, I just didn't come in agreement with it, even though that's what's happening. Something rose in my spirit. Something that said, wait a minute, Jesus. I can't allow that to cripple my nation. I've got to do my part. I got to start dreaming for people. I got to start getting a bigger vision. Come on, church. I got to start pulling people up. Come on, church. Because I don't want pharmaceuticals to have the company. I don't want devil, the devil to come in and cause division in the church. I don't want the devil to have a field day. I want to undo the works of the devil. There's an absolute truth. The reason why he's crippled is not because God crippled him, because the devil cripples the church. It's not the leader of church. It is the enemy. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, church, I love this part. <clears throat> Meliana, could you get my water? Right all the way to the end, sweetie. It says, it says, and he took him, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, everybody say, immediately. Turn to your neighbor and say, immediately. I like immediately. 
I like immediately. That means right now. I serve a right now God. I understand there are times when we have to wait on God. I understand there's a time that we need to be patient and wait for the promise of God to come to pass. But sometimes when there is conditions like there is right now, then God breaks in and does a immediately. Cindy, I'm living for the immediately. I prophesied to your mother uh, and immediately. Come on, your last night. Church, how many want an immediately tonight? I want an immediately. I want a suddenly. Come on. I want a right something right now. I, I, I didn't come to church because I, I want it next year. I need it immediately. My, my, my marriage is crippled. I, my, my, my dream is crippled. My, my life is crippled. My, my more, my, House is crippled. My finances are crippled. I need an immediately. Somebody went to church with a dream and saw the power of God. And immediately, come on, church, it says, his feet and ankle bones receive strength. <laughs> Son of man, can these bones live? Only you know, God. <clears throat> now, that's, okay. that's an okay answer. Then prophesy. Then prophesy. To these bones. Now, God, couldn't you do it yourself? You want an immediately? How many want an immediately? You're waiting for me to prophesy over you. No. You start prophesying. You're waiting for Ron to prophesy over you. You're waiting for somebody to prophesy over you. I'm telling you right now, I love when people prophesy over me, but there comes a time when I got to prophesy myself. I need immediately. I, I need it right now. Prophesy, son of man. What? My voice is going to do something about the condition? Yes. Your speech has that kind of power. Church, think about it. Your speech is a direct reflection of where you are in your life. Oh, Jim, life and death are in the power of the tongue. <laughs> because why? The man was crippled. Because all he was asking for silver and gold. Because of all you're asking for money, you are just crippled. Let me just say this. I, I, I need finances to continue on the road, but my wife knows me. I'm not saying, God, money, 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 give me money. I'm saying, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Spirit of prophecy, healing, signs and wonders. God, let your anointing, let your glory fall on me. Make me an instrument to give people back their dream. God, he used me. What do I, God, use me. There shouldn't be Christian superstars. The days of superstars are going to end. I'm going to tell you, they're going to end. It's the no names. The no names that really got it. Church, I don't have a, be a drive a Bentley to be anointed. Nor am I against a preacher driving a Bentley. I want to make this clear because an athlete can drive a Bentley. Nobody's getting upset when an athlete drives a Bentley. Come on. Nobody gets upset when LeBron James has, you know, how many cars. Come on. But if a pastor has a nice car, they got a problem. Are you hearing me when I'm at? I'm nothing. I, 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 I'm nothing. I don't have any problem, any problem with, with God prospering the man or woman of God. I have absolutely no problem. But what I have a problem is when that becomes your vision. 
Are you hearing? When that becomes your vision, then you have missed the boat, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm going to correct you right now. I, we're not going to go that way. Come on, church, because what? Because whether I have a, a Bentley or a Volkswagen, you know what? If I can't get the man at the gate beautiful, who cares what I'm driving? Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll drive a Ford Focus. I'll, I'll drive a truck. I, I really don't really care what I drive, church. But, I, I, you know, I, I was praying for them. I prayed that someone would give them a BMW. That would be nice. I have no problem for the, for, for the woman of God to pull up in a BMW. She should. She deserves it. Somebody needs to buy her a car. If you could buy her a car, you'd need to buy one tomorrow for her. Immediately. 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 Because I, I saw that car that she drove. The pastor's wife should not be driving that kind of car. I'm just telling you. And I don't go buy her the same kind. Buy her a Cadillac or a BMW or... Rolls Royce or whatever you want to buy her. Come on, church. She deserves it, right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? She, she's, she's a, she works hard. Does she work hard? And some people got this attitude. Hey, look at the pastor's wife driving. She ought to drive a better car than you. As a woman of God, I believe in that. Because I know that's not her heart. Her heart. It's to see people picked up. Her heart is to see people that don't have a dream come alive on the inside and say, oh, God, thank you for sending me the new hope. I got my dream back. My marriage was restored. My emotions were healed. I was saved. I was rescued out of bondage. I, I was rescued in my mind. It was a torment, but I got delivered from the demonic. Come on, church. Now, listen to this. Can these bones live? You know God. Prophesy, son of man. So I prophesied as I was commanded. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. I just used my mouth. <laughs> because your mouth will change the environment of your city. Your, your mouth will change the environment of your life. It will change the atmosphere. Because here's the thing. It's not up to this couple to determine the atmosphere tonight. They're not the guest. Whether I have a worship team or not, I praise God for the great worship team. I, I'm very thankful. You ought to give God a hand. Come on, for sending them. For sending this couple to you. It's God's grace, God's handy work. Come on. Now, at the same time, they're not responsible for the spiritual atmosphere. My mouth is. Come on, church. Well, there was no, I didn't feel anything tonight. I didn't sense anything tonight. Brother, stop confessing that and prophesy. Turn to your neighbor say, prophesy. See, I want the church to get back to doing what she's been doing, needs to be doing, what they did in the book of Acts. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, and my sons and daughters will prophesy. Because if you're not prophesying, you're complaining about those that do. Most people that aren't prophesying are so dry. Come on, church. They're crippled. Just help me. Please, I know I'm going over tonight, but I'm in my own world right now. <laughs> Please help me. Prophesy. And when he pro and when I prophesied, as I was commanded, God got involved. Bone came to bone. Flesh grew on the bone. Muscle came on it. They started looking like people again. He didn't look like a man at Gate Beautiful. That wasn't the image of God. He didn't look like a man. 
at the gate beautiful. He didn't, that wasn't the image of God. He said, Peter and John said, I want you to look like what you made to be. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I'm pulling you up. Church, can I tell you something? You know why I want silver and gold? Not to drive a nice car. So I can go all over this country and pick people up. I can go to China, pick people up. I can go to the nations and pick up a dreamless, hopeless life, nation. Church, the devil wants to keep the church crippled without vision, without dream. And so when you don't have a vision, you perish. Now, listen, the new, and I, I mean, the New King James Version said, New King James Translation says, without a revelation, my people are cast off restraint. You know what that means? Cast off restraint. That means if they don't have a revelation of God. See, that's why, that's why I, I learned something today at lunch, something called common core. I learned something today. I didn't know about it. I heard it, but I didn't know what it was. But church, when you take God out, when there's no God vision, then people are cast off restraint, which means they'll do anything. Do you know in California right now, just up the road, I don't know, probably five hours, six hours up in Santa Cruz, California, that right now in the city of Santa Cruz, nudity is legal? It's legal in the city of Santa Cruz. Now, church, that's cast off restraint. Now, church, I can look at that, and that's disgusting, or realize, wait a minute, church. I've got to do my part in picking people up. Come on, church, and giving back their God-given dream. Come on, church, because the reason why they passed that law is because people have no revelation of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But this is what happened. i, I got to close because I've been going an hour. And so here's what it says. I don't want to close, but I'm going to. His feet and ankle receive strength. Everybody say, receive strength. Church, when I get a God-given dream, it strengthens my inner person. Oh, come on, church. When I get a God-given dream, come here, Meliana. I, I, I'm going to steal your story. But back in uh, September, we were in... Uh, in a place where a, um, a gentleman that used to pe used to be here named Dan Preciado he used to attend this church. He's pastoring in this place called Kailua. It's on the island of Oahu. It's a beautiful place, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And, and probably the most second most expensive areas on Oahu to live. And um, they have up there a... Old World War II bunkers. They have three of them. They're up on the mountain. And the view up there, I, I was told, is absolutely incredible. But the problem is, it's quite a hike. It's a hike not for the faint of heart. Because you're walking along the edge of a cliff. And I'm going to let Meliana tell you what happened to her on that hike. We, um, there is a rope. There is a, there is a rope that, uh, because it's so steep, there's no perfect trail to get up to the top. And when we got to the, the bottom, I, I saw there's a rope that you have to hang on to to help you to get up, to climb up. So we start climbing, and I hang on to that, to that rope, and I climb and climb and climb. Finally, there's no more rope. 
then you have to find your way. So when there's no more rope, then I just try to find my way. You have to hang on to the rock or whatever you can hang on to to find your way up. And I, I think I probably about half a mile or three quarter mile on my way up. I got so tired. Then I stop. And when I stop, I dis I, I stop try to catch my breath. So I decided to look behind me and look at my left and look at my right. And I saw how steep it was. And all of a sudden, fear gripped me. And I froze right there. I couldn't move anymore because this is what went through my mind. If I make one more move, step, I will fall down and die. That was. Let me, let me just say this. There are people in this room tonight. You're froze. You're crippled by fear. That's what happened to Meliana. You can see your destination. You know where God wants to take you, but you're afraid to step at one more step because you might fall. You look behind you, you've got a past. You look on your right and you look on your left and there's a cliff. And if you make one false step, you think it's over. Church, can I tell you something? When you're dreaming, you're not looking back. When you're dreaming about your destination, you are not looking what's on your left or what's on your right. You're looking up ahead. Come on, church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you're dreaming. You're, when you're dreaming, you're not looking what people are, 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 are posting on Facebook about you. Church, can I tell you something? There isn't a week that goes by that I don't get some negative thing posted on my little private message that, that on my Facebook, my, in my inbox, and they post some bad message about me. But here's what I do. That's not my dream. Come on, church. That's not my dream. I, and I could sit there and be froze by those words. Come on, church. I could sit there. I could be crippled at the gate tonight. But because I have a dream, because my Lord came back and he picked me up and put me on my feet. Now, now church, I had, it, when, when Meliana and I went up to that hike, I had, I had gone ahead. I got up to the bunker and I was waiting for her. And I could see her down there. And, I, and, and when she, I mean, she literally was like this. So, oh, no, what happened? But then I saw her put her head down. Come here, sweetie. Because you tell it better than I do. As I was putting my head down, and like what I said earlier, I was froze. And all of a sudden, I remember a scripture that Paul prayed. I believe in the book of Ephesians. He said, I prayed that your inner man will be strengthened so you know the height, the depth, the width of his love. Amen? And when, that, when I remember that scripture, all of a sudden there was a shot of energy, strength came upon me and all of a sudden came to my mind what am I doing stopping right here looking behind me looking all around me instead of focusing where I was going amen and when I focus on where I was going then I start get, regaining all my right thinking right mind and I start climbing and climbing and climbing when up to the top the most beautiful view that I almost missed. But guess what? Then I start going down. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Praise God. I, I want to say something to you. I want to say something to you. Peter and John decided to climb the steps that day. Are you ready to climb to another place, New Hope? In your life. Come on, church. Because what God wants to do is God wants to promote every single one of you. To a new place, a new destiny, a new hope, a new, a new power, a new anointing. I'm telling you this right now. Now, now most people were, uh, I, I think it's not only the silver and gold, Meliana, but I believe that most people say, what, what if I pick him up and he doesn't walk? 
What if I pray for him and nothing happens? It's not up to you to make what happens. It's up to you to pick him up and to prophesy. God didn't tell Ezekiel, make it happen. God told Ezekiel to prophesy. You do what you're supposed to do, I'll make it happen. Come on. You speak silver and gold, have I none? I'll make it happen. Now, now, church, I've got to close because I love this part. He, uh, and his feet and ankle received strength. So his entire life got strengthened. Oh, Jesus. Just like Meliana, when she was froze, paralyzed, crippled by fear, all of a sudden strength entered into her. So check this out. Cindy, you know where he went? He didn't went back to the go. I'm going back to the guy. I'm going back to the people that carried me. You know where the first place he went? He went straight into the presence of God. He got up and the gay beautiful went straight to church. Walked in the church. Sister Bobby, my Miss Pentecost, favorite woman on the planet. It says, so he leaped up, stood, and walked and entered the temple with them. Listen to this. Walking. Everybody say walking. Leaping and praising God. How many want to put the walk back in the crippled? How many want to put the leap back in the dreamless? How many want to put the hope back in the hopeless? Come on, church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's our assignment to get the church back to leaping, dancing, and shouting, and praising God. Can I hear an amen tonight? Stand to your feet right now. Father, we thank you for your word. It's a lamp and to our feet and a light upon our very path. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Church, I want you to stretch forth your hands to this worship team. I know I prophesied over the leader, but I want you to stretch forth your hands to this platform right now. And I want you to begin to prophesy. I want you to begin to prophesy. What we're going to do is we're going to get agreement with God's heart that we're going to prophesy, and I, I want you to say this after me. I prophesy. I, prophesy. I speak to this team. I, speak to this team. I, prophesy, to I prophesy to this platform that it will be a place of leaping, praising, shouting, dancing, celebrating the power of God. And every person on this team will understand their responsibility to pick people up to give them their dream back fill the worship team Lord full of dreamers lift your hands all over the place Brother Jawan, just sing in the spirit. Just sing in the spirit all over this room right now. Sing in the spirit all over this room right now. Sing in the spirit all over this room right now. Sing in the spirit all over this room right now. All over this room. All over this room tonight. Sing in the Holy Ghost. Let your voice arise. Let your voice rise. I'm <laughs> 
Just flow all over this room, Holy Spirit. Let the wine flow, let the Spirit flow all over this room. Miracles, signs, and wonders be released in the atmosphere right now. Power be released. Healing be released. Holy Spirit be released. Uncork the bottle of your power. Let the battle cry. The battle cry. The battle cry be released. Fill the balconies, God. Fill the balconies with souls. Fill the balconies with souls. Fill the balconies with souls. Dry bones, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. Shalom by my power, but by the Spirit. Release a battle cry, Lord. Release the battle cry for a dreamless nation. For a paralyzed people. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I am. In the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Walk, Corona. Walk, Corona. Walk, Corona. Walk, Corona. Walk, Corona. Walk, Corona. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And dance all around. Release the battle cry tonight. Release the battle cry of the early church. Release the battle cry of the early church. Pastor Ron, 
Lord, we call on the God of Elijah. Pastor Ron and Delana, go lay hands on people all over this room. Just go around and lay hands on people. Uh, worship team, as you're singing, go and lay hands on people right now. Go lay hands on people right now. Go lay hands on people. There's a power being released right now in this room. Go lay hands on people right now. Go lay hands on people. Go lay hands, go lay hands, go lay hands on people all over the room. Go lay hands. Release it, God. Release what Peter had right now in the name of Jesus. Release it right now in this room. Release it right now. Pastor Daniel, if you're here, lay hands on people. Pastor Renee, if you're here, and Sister Bobby, go around and lay hands on people right now. There's something happening in the atmosphere right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Giving them back their dream, oh God. Give them back their dream right now.
Press in, church. Press in. Press in, church. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Don't be afraid. Rise up, rise up. Rise up, rise up. Sister Bobby, what's the problem? What's wrong with him? Lift your hands, young man. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I want every head bowed, every eye closed all over this room. Every head bowed, every eye closed all over this room. Just tone down the music just a little bit. Just the piano. Just the piano. Just play, young man. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you're praying for people, just pray real quietly. If you're here tonight 
and you say, preacher, I want my dream back. I've lost my dream. I've lost my vision. I'm like that man at the gate. I may have two legs, I may have two arms, I may have two eyes. But I have no redemptive revelation, no prophecy to dream about. And I want to dream again. If you're in this room, within the sound of my voice, or you're on this property, or you can hear me, and you're here tonight and you say, I want my dream back. I want you to get out of where you're standing, where you're at. I want you to come and stand right in front of me. Come right now, right now, real quickly. Come right now. I want my dream back. Come right now.